yeah, this is Helen Dottie Adams with Voice of a Veteran. I am zooming in from St. Cloud, Florida. How exciting is that? Land of Disney, Mickey Mouse. So here I am here today to help you guys understand a little bit about changing your mindset from the military way of thinking like I used to be like to the new way of thinking dealing with the VA, the civilian way. First slide, please. So how many of you have ever had problems dealing with the VA? I know that I did when I first got out. I didn't know I was even entitled to anything. I was a dental lab tech and a dental assistant, and all I had was my education benefits. So my thought process was just go to school, start my life, and get on with it. Well, life had a different path for me because I got introduced to the uh, number one obstacle that all of us face is our mindset, our military mindset. So one of the things I'd like to share with you, the first side is the military mindset. And then the second part is the component to how to combat that on the VA side. So how many of you heard no pain, no gain? Work through that pain. Um, how about you're going to be punished, right? If you go to sick hall, you're going to be labeled. You're going to be teased by your unit. Sometimes um, you might find that you don't, you're persuaded not to even go because you are feeling bad about um, things or you might get held back. What if you were negatively viewed by your peers that you're slacking? How about what if you prejudge yourself? There's nothing wrong with me. I'm young. I don't need help. And the worst one that I see a lot of, I don't need the VA's help. Other people need it more than me. So what I have found is the VA mindset is totally different. So you have to learn how to self-advocate for yourself, okay? When you go to the exams, the law says to the point of pain. The examiners cannot push you through that pain cycle. You can stop and say stop. You can advocate and be honest and open to your providers. Don't hold anything back. Talk about your worst days, not your best days. You're not there to impress anybody. Document, document, document. If you are still active duty, please make sure that it's recorded in your records. It's really important. So people ask me all the time, well, how do I document something that, you know, basically, I, I, how do I show them what I have? And I'm like, that's easy. If you can visually take pictures of things that are problematic, take a picture, do a journal, do a calendar. How often does this happen to you? How long does it last? Anything and everything to substantiate your claim. And finally, use a buddy statement. Did you tell anybody about what was going on? Did you reach out to um, your higher command? Is there records of that? Your buddies, your peers can do statements. Hey, I was there. I saw. I, I know this person before they got injured and now this is what i'm seeing so help each other out and do statements for each other they're called lay statements or buddy statements you can write your own you can have your spouse write one for you because i tell you i'm not the same person i was when i was 18 years old and joined the army even only serving four years i got out i had tons of medical issues next slide i want you to know the most important thing you are not alone in this process. I'm here to help you navigate and understand through three basic E components. We're going to educate you, okay, using the law that governs the VA, Title 38. We're going to use forms that are used on you when you go for your compensation pension exams. They're called um, disability benefits questionnaires, DBQs. You're entering a world with a whole new set of acronyms. Once you get out of the military, you've got to learn a whole new language and a whole new system of navigation. We're going to engage you, okay? We're going to keep you engaged with the VA. Don't walk away due to red tape. And if, you're, if you go to the VA and you're told you made too much money, there's a second component there. That's called the means test. But if you become 10% disabled vet, that goes out the door. So make sure you know your rights. Using a veteran's advocacy service is your number one way to stay engaged, okay? You go to veteran service organization meetings. When I was in Fairbanks, Alaska, I used DAV. Hawaii has DAV. Other organizations, check them out. That's how I started when I was 24 years old and didn't know anything. There certainly isn't a class 
that teaches you this. Even the TAP classes don't teach you how to navigate the VA. They tell you that they're there and it's up to you to figure this out. Well, not anymore. You're not alone, I promise. Empower yourself, okay? Advocate for yourself. Build your case. Learn how to organize everything. Become intimately knowledgeable about your records. And definitely, please change your military mindset. This is the number one struggle every active duty has as they transition to the VA healthcare system and benefit system. Next slide, please. Okay. You versus the VA. Now, let me help you understand this. If you upload your documents into eBenefits or any electronic uh, VA.gov or any electronic VA document system uploading, you are doing yourself a huge disservice. Please utilize accredited representatives, such as disabled American veterans. Uh, here in Florida, I use a lot of the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs, but use these accredited representatives. And on that slide, you can down, you can uh, hit the hyperlink and find the person's that you are interested in working with. If they are not accredited through the VA, usually it's a scam. I can tell you that ahead of time. There are a lot of agencies that are not being managed by the VA to look out for you. These accredited representatives um, for initial claims do not charge a dime. It's only when you get denied a claim, then they can charge you and it's a contract and it's all pre-approved by the VA so that you don't get ripped off, right? Well, because of COVID and because of the PACT Act, the new law that we'll talk about a little bit, there has been tremendous problems with the veterans being um, scammed by these organizations that claim to help you, but they want upfront money please do due diligence. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Do not upload your documents into the VA system. You're not represented. You're not represented. You need a veterans advocacy agency to help you. Please, please do that. Next slide. Now, a lot of times people don't even understand the basic components that, um, the VA is Department of Veterans Affairs. Next to the DOD, they are the second fun, uh, most funded agency in the US government. They have a cabinet position with the president and there are four components of the VA that you need to understand. And understand this, they don't talk to each other. So if you change your information in one, you need to let the others know if you, if you especially in healthcare and in benefits. So if you up if you upload or change anything, please make sure it's on both sides of the house. Now there's the Veterans Benefits Administration. They deal with everything other than your health care. Here's a link to them and a phone number. Please use use that. The other one is the Veterans Healthcare Administration. They are fantastic. They do everything concerning what? Healthcare, exactly. And the National Cemetery Administration, they deal with everything concerning um, burials at national cemeteries, reimbursement for burial expenses. And they have a change recently that you can pre predetermine and, and make yourself eligible if you want to be buried in a national cemetery, you can set all that up ahead of time. How fantastic is that? And last but not least, certainly, is the Vet Center. They're a readjustment counseling center that's there for combat vets and for veterans suffering from military sexual trauma. I was a work study at a vet center, and it is a very different uh, mindset. The, their their whole office is different. How they treat veterans is different. And they do not share your information with big VA, with uh, VHA, unless you allow them to. So it's a great opportunity to, to diffuse and learn benefits and get counseling sooner than if you were to use the VA, um, the big VA. Next slide. Know the law that governs you and the VA. The, the law that governs the VA is Title 38, Chapter 1. Okay, here's a site for it. Um, and under Chapter 1, Part 4, there's regulations, right? Subpart A. And the key things that people don't know, that is if they get a rating officer that um, makes a, is rude to you or is disrespectful, you have the right to get a new rating officer. 
Nobody knows that. They just accept what is given to them. Military mindset strikes again. You know, don't make waves. Get what you get. Suck it up. Move on. Stuff like that. Well, I'm telling you right now, the law has protective uh, rights in there. And one of them that people don't usually utilize is the attitude of the rating officer. They have to show you respect and they cannot be disrespectful or rude to you or try to hurt you in any way. People go, hey, VA math doesn't add up. Here's the combined ratings table on how they um, do the VA math. And when you look at it, there's instructions on how to read your your combined table and convalescent ratings. Um, if you are a hundred, if you are, say for instance, you need crutches for months on end or a month and you're immobile for 30 days or more, you can request if you're service connected for that knee and you have to have surgery, you can request that you get convalescent rating at the hundred percent rate. That's, you have to apply. So the second part is subpart B, the schedule of ratings. Every part B has the major muscle groups or the major uh, body components. And then at the very bottom, it's called sub, um, excuse me, schedule of disability ratings. That is phenomenal because it tells you from zero to 100 what you can get for those symptoms. So you can use that to your advantage and tell the VA basically what's going on with you. Please think of the VA as someone that you're trying to paint a picture about your military service. A lot of veterans go in for their exams and they go, hey, this is what happened to me in military service. And after I got out, I did A, B, C, and D. No, you're there to tell them what happened to you in military service. That's it. How did this hurt you? How did this impact you? That's what you're there for. Don't go into great detail about after your military service. VA doesn't give you compensation for that, only for what is service connected while you were active duty. Understand that. Next slide, please. The PACT Act is the newest law in 83 years for us veterans, and it's phenomenal. Check it out. A lot of Vietnam veterans are being affected by the PACT Act. Gulf War veterans, please, please, please look at this. Be very familiar. If you have questions, contact me because the PACT Act, one of the things that changed was hypertension. So a lot of veterans have heart attack, hypertension. They served in Vietnam. They expanded the duty of service exposure to Agent Orange, to Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Johnson Atoll. My own husband was affected by that. He served in Johnson Atoll in the 90s. And we found out under the PACT Act that guess what? He was exposed to Agent Orange and he filed a claim because he is diabetic. Diabetes is a presumptive uh, issue concerned with exposure to Agent Orange. So there's all these laws and all these things. If you get complicated, don't worry. You just contact me and I will help you. Okay, next slide. Everything that we do um, is for one purpose in my mind. We don't want to lose another brother or sister to suicide. Uh, 22 a day has been reported. I personally feel like it's a lot more than just 22. Um, I deal with this a lot, especially with combat veterans. Uh, please, they have changed the new uh, the new crisis line number. It is so much easier to call now. And I want to talk a little bit about mental health and crisis line because mental health. A lot of people try to avoid mental health. We can talk about anything and everything when it concerns body issues, but the minute I start talking to veterans about mental health, they want to clam up. Well, to me, as you all know, it's mind, body, spirit. And so if we deal with the body, we're missing out on taking care of our mind. And our mind is so critical to help us with our body. So, and it's a holistic approach, right? When I lived in Hawaii, I was fortunate to use the VA there and they have wonderful mental health programs there with art therapy and writing and all these things um, transitioning. So check them out if you're in Hawaii at, um, at, at that VA there. And I was fortunate because that's not everywhere. There are times when, when you go to the doctor, especially down here, a lot of the VA uh, mental health providers want to prescribe medication, medication, medication. And if you need it, I'm all about it. I was on a lot of medication for a long time. 
But what I found is I do better through talk therapy. And I encourage all of my veterans to use talk therapy and talk to their providers and say, hey, I want a voice in my care plan. And um, really be adamant. If you don't want to take medication, they cannot force you to do so. There are other methods to help you in the mental health field. Dialectical behavior therapy, um, cognitive behavior therapy, uh, prolonged exposure. It just goes on and on and on. And so utilize those and see how that helps you. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you from my own personal experience what has worked for me and what um, I tried to help navigate and advocate for other veterans. The crisis line, everybody thinks the only way you can contact them is if you are suicidal or homicidal. That is not the truth, okay? When you're in crisis, what does that mean? I know what it means for me. Let me give you a good example. I was in Walmart uh, shopping and I don't do well with the self-check checkout thing, right? I like people actually to interact with. And I was stuck that day. They didn't have any tellers. I had to go through the self-checkout. I freaked. I left my buggy in the middle of Walmart, went to my car crying because now I'm frustrated and angry. I called crisis line. And they're, they're your number one advocate. They are your best friend. They will sit by you and help diffuse the situation. Um, and they will ask you always, are you suicidal or homicidal? And if you are, we need to get you to a safe place, into a hospital. And that leads me to a number two thing about the newest law changes. There's a new law called the Compact Act. Any veteran that is in crisis, in suicidal crisis, can go to any emergency room and say, I'm a veteran, and if they have to inpatient you, VA will pay. We do not want to lose another veteran to suicide. We want to do everything we can. And I encourage you in your communities to start having that dialogue on how to best serve our nation's veterans and their families, right? Because families are impacted too. And a lot of times we focus a lot on the veterans and the families are kind of left to the wayside. Well, families, I'm an army brat. So families, military families are amazing. The spouses that stay behind and run everything and take care of the children and the finances while the service member goes off and gets deployed. Um, my hats are off to you. My dad did 22 years army and um, I was moved around every two years. I understand that the children and the spouses desperately need help. And there's a lot of mechanisms if you're a combat vet for family therapy through the vet center or through the VA. If you lose a veteran, there's bereavement counseling. I have sent many people to bereavement counseling because they don't know what to do when their veteran passes. They don't know how to navigate anything. And some of them due to income are eligible uh, for pension or for um, DIC if the veteran passed for a service-connected disability. Um, there's a lot out there. This is, this is huge. VA knowledge is huge. But what I'm here to tell you is you contact me, I will help you navigate through all of this and answer questions and share screen with you and talk story. I'm all about that. Do not suffer in silence anymore. I see that all the time. I see people that have not told their story in 20, 30 years. Myself, I did not talk about my own traumas in the military. I had instances of MST, which is military sexual trauma, and I thought that was just normal behavior back in the 80s in the military. Well, no, I suffered with that for 30 years before I even spoke out, and I don't want anybody out there to ever sit in silence and suffer. We're here to help each other. All the traumas, all the stuff that we all went through, we are here for one purpose in my mind. It is just to reach out and help each other. And I'm here. Um, I started my own nonprofit called Connecting the Dots for Veterans. And um, you can reach me through this Linktree account, link.tree slash connecting the dots for veterans. And this will help you navigate and understand. Uh, if anything, please, please talk to somebody. Okay. I'm here to help navigate and educate you. We, we do that, like I said, through a couple uh, methods. I hope the slides help you. 
please feel free once again to reach out to me. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege. Uh, just so that all of you know, this is a continuation of uh, Voice of the Veteran. Uh, I want to thank Jay Fidel and the Think Tech family for allowing me to restart this. This started in 2017 and I had to leave the island due to my own health issues and move to Florida. I had triple bypass in Honolulu and I needed more uh, care. And so I had to move down to Florida to get it. And it's been an amazing journey, but I just wanted to thank the Think Tech family. This is really critical. Our veterans in Hawaii face a unique situation. Their resources are very limited, especially if they live off of Oahu. Even on Oahu, I was looking at the reports in 2018 to 2019, the number of veterans that uh, asked for care jumped up over 600%. And it's only going to get more and more. And the resources are, are still less and less. So they try to do community care. They try to help as much as possible but there's only so many doctors that can go around and just please don't give up hope don't give up being your self-advocate if you don't like your own doctor guess what one piece of paper and you can ask for a new doctor and they will they will make that happen it may take a little bit of time but that's okay you're worth it uh, i want to thank all of you active duty that are out there serving today all those that came before me and all those that are serving now and are coming after me. My son is active duty Air Force stationed at Lackland. And uh, I just, all the you that are deployed have a safe trip home. And I just want to say mahalo and well wishes to all of you and your families. And, and I wish nothing but good things and safety for all of you. This is Helen Dottie Adams signing out. Mahalo and God bless. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.